Except for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the other feasts commemorate some aspect of the Exodus. The final Feast of Tabernacles recalls the seven days of travel culminated by crossing the Red Sea on the eighth day. Exodus 5.1 And afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus said the Lord, God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. This word for feast, kogag, is only used in reference to the Feast of Tabernacles, which is held in the fall. Yet Moses uses this word in the spring. Kogag means to march in circles in a holy procession. During the Feast of Tabernacles, the faithful take their lulavs and march around the altar saying a prayer of deliverance known as Hoshanos, and ending it with Hoshana, save now. And the seventh day they march around seven times. It was called the Day of Great Hosanna. Kogag also means to observe a festival, dance, be glad, and celebrate. Among Jews, Feast of Tabernacles is known as the Feast. Psalm 27, 6 And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Psalm 118 The Lord is my strength and song, and is become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech you, send now prosperity. Blessed be he that comes in the name of the Lord. During Tabernacles, Psalm 27 is recited every day and the great Hallel of Psalms 113 through 118 are sung. In Exodus chapter 6, God lists the heads of the tribes of Israel, then says, Bring out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt according to their armies, with armies referring to tribes. So how they set up their tents, or sukkahs, as they traveled, was a very important part of their exodus, so much so that God ordained it as Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles to be celebrated every year to remember how God brought them out of Egypt ready to fight. And God remained in the middle of the camp as a pillar of cloud by day and fire by night. God later gave Moses the pattern for God's tabernacle to be in the middle of the camp. Exodus 8:22 22-24a And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. To the end you may know that I am the Lord in the middle of the earth, and I will put a division between my people and your people. Tomorrow shall this sign be, and the Lord did so. Paduth means distinction or redemption. At the plague of the death of the firstborn, in Exodus 11:7, it says, But against any of the children of Israel, Shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that you may know how that the Lord does put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel? Difference is pala, meaning to distinguish, set apart, make separate, or make wonderful. Psalm 78, 43-45 How he had worked the signs in Egypt, and had turned their rivers into blood, and their floods that they could not drink. He sent diverse sorts of flies among them, which devoured them, and frogs, which destroyed them. The Egyptians scoffed at the first two plagues, because their magicians could copy them. Yet their land stank from the dead fish and frogs, which could allude to the stench in God's nostrils from their immorality and idolatry. But when the magicians couldn't make lice appear, they began to fear. God made a distinction between the Hebrews in Goshen and the people of Egypt as he displayed his power. After the Hebrews ate Passover, they traveled to Ramses. Then on Nisan 15, they left Egypt and camped at Sukkot. From Sukkot to Etham on the edge of the wilderness was about 80 miles. 
From Etham they could have gone around the Red Sea easily to the north, but then so could the Egyptians who were pursuing them. God sent them south to the beach at Paharoth, about fifty miles, another two days walking. One plus four plus two equals seven days. Seven days of unleavened bread and living in booths or tents. They crossed the Red Sea on the eighth day, which was the Feast of First Fruits. Passover coincided with the tenth plague in which the Hebrews were protected from the angel of death because of the blood of the Lamb on their doorposts. Unleavened bread and tabernacles correspond to the seven days of travel. First fruits and the eighth day of tabernacles correspond with the day the Hebrews crossed over the Red Sea on dry ground, and then the Egyptians pursued and were consumed as God released the Red Sea back upon them, destroying the enemies of his people. 9-11 was the wake-up call of the white horse. Terrorists have removed peace from the earth. We are experiencing the bad economy of the black horse and are asked to expect many H1N1 deaths. War, bad economics, and death are things people can do to themselves and are not viewed by most people as prophetic fulfillments. But in the plagues to come, God will again make himself known and make a distinction between those who worship the beast of Babylon and those who do not. Revelation 16, 1-7 And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God on the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial on the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore on the men which had the mark of the beast, and on them which worshipped his image. And the second angel poured out his vial on the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial on the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, you are righteous, O Lord, which are, and were, and shall be, because you have judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. It was J. Barton Payne who grafted the trumpets and vials in tandem. It makes sense, and there are several parallels. The second trumpet and vial are both blood in seas. The third trumpet and vial are both making the rivers and springs undrinkable. The sixth trump and vial regard the battle of Armageddon. The seventh trump, vial, and seal are the final devastations before Christ's immediate return. There is no mention in Scripture of a future seven-year tribulation only of a three-and-a-half-year Great Tribulation preceded by birth pangs. Our day of escape will be the resurrection and rapture. We will spend seven days with Christ in the New Jerusalem cube orbiting Earth while the Earth burns. The Father and Holy Spirit will create a new heaven and Earth, and we will return to it with Christ and live in peace and safety for a thousand years. Isaiah 4, 2-6 in that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the middle thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. And the Lord will create on every dwelling place on Mount Zion and on her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day, and the shining of a flaming fire by night, for on all the glory shall be a defense, and there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat, and for a place of refuge, and for a covert from the storm and from rain. Leviticus 23 Also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast to the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. You shall dwell in booths seven days, all that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths, that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God.